Well, hello, it's Professor Photo, and today we're going to talk about films, different kind of films, and we're going to talk about exposure and how to get the right exposure. And you'll notice from looking at this picture that we've got TechPan 25, TMAX 400, we have Ilford 400, we have the Pro 400H, we also have <clears throat> Velvia, which is the 50, not the 25, we also have the B. 400 CN, which is done in C41 development, and of course we have some ADOX 25 black and white. Now, every one of these films has a different characteristic. However, for people who are just getting into doing film, don't have a lot of experience with film, the one mandatory thing that you're going to need to get, you're going to need to get a light meter. And you're going to need to get a light meter that is a good quality light meter. We're going to talk about this in some depth today. To start with, slow speed films, especially if they're color transparency films, have very high contrast and that means that they cannot deal with bright differences between shade and highlights. 400, this is a negative film, does much better. TechPan is a classic example of another black and white film that is very high contrast um, <clears throat> and yet at the same time the deal is it has to be handled specifically differently. Whereas Ilford 400, TMAX 400, they're a very forgiving wide latitude. The CHS uh, 25 art film is an ultra thin emulsion. It is a fabulous ultra fine grain film, but of course it's a very slow speed, ASA, ISO 25, uh, ISO 25 basically. And so the deal here is the fact that it's like you've got to have a light meter that will allow you to work with this. Now, if you look at the light meter that we have right now, which is a Sekonic, this Sekonic meter is several years old, but it was really the first digital light meter that came out, LED. And you can see that it allows us, you can move in a little closer with the camera to see the screen if you need to, you know, it allows us to change f-stops, and as we change f-stops, of course, it's calibrated. Now, the light meter reading that we took shows that right now with the light meter set for incident reading, we took a light reading, we can shoot it <clears throat> f1, at one one thousandth of a second and be guaranteed that we have the right exposure for the current uh, light environment under an incident reading. But this camera, this light meter also has the ability to do reflective reading, which it has a spot and it can go from one, one degree to 15 degree and this allows you to do reflective readings. Now depending on your style of photography, depending on what you're doing, you may want to use either a reflective reading or an incident reading. I personally use an incident reading whether it's black and white or color, negative or transparency. And I'll explain that in a minute. The key thing about this is it allows you to set up different ISOs. It allows you to calculate what you're doing. You see up here, this is natural sunlight. This is with strobe. You can do a lot of things with this. It gives you a battery reading. And it allows you to work with your situations to establish a control, a standard. This is the only thing that will guarantee you that you have an accurate idea on what the real lighting situation is for your situation. Early on with classic rangefinders, classic SLRs, they had no light meters. And if they did, they had these very, very funky uh, light meters that were basically dealing with light that filtered through a piece of plastic or glass. It was kind of an incident reading. It wasn't really an incident reading. The metering cells they were using weren't working very well at the time, and so <clears throat> the handheld light meter became an industry all into itself. Uh, a lot of us, early on, we worked with things like Lunapro, which was a very good light meter for its time. But as we've gone on, people like Sekonic, which is a very, very good brand, have made very good meters that can do a lot of things. And now you can have light meters that will give you color temperature readings and all kinds of things. So um, if you're shooting black and white and you're new to film, or if you're shooting color transparency or color negative film, you absolutely have to have a handheld light meter because you cannot trust the light meter in your classic camera because of the way that they worked. Even up into the late series of like, as an example, Canon EOS or even Nikon F5, uh, there are many times and under certain conditions where those light meters can be fooled dramatically by things like specular highlights. And so by having this, it's going to allow you to set a control standard. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to keep a small notebook with you so that you can establish what the light readings were when you were taking a particular group of pictures. Now, when you're shooting with real film or real transparency film or real color negative film, the deal is you have to slow down. You have to do more thinking. 
One of the reasons that the digital market has done so well is because people basically are in a hurry. And that's one of the reasons that cell phones are such a big thing for most people. They take a quick snapshot, they don't really care. Um, as an example right now, this is being shot on an iPhone 7. The one problem with the iPhone 7 is it has a tendency under lighting conditions to constantly overexpose things. And I wish they would give us the ability to dial in exposure on this so we could monitor it because here we have like a white box, here we have a yellow box, and what it has a tendency to do is it has a tendency to overexpose for the dark bodies or the shadows. So it, it goes out of alignment for what we see now. So let's go ahead and talk about specific films and characteristics of those films and we'll get into some charts.